Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here, lady. We're Karen's mistake, regular customers as employees. And in today's episode, OP tells a story about the time a Karen frames him to get him thrown in jail, all because he won't obey her demands. And of course, it backfires so hard. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So let me tell you, this happened a few hours ago, and I decided to post here while it's still fresh in my memory. I live in Rio de Janeiro, and today I had some sort of business downtown. I was making my way back home when I get approached by what I assume was an American tourist, and I only say that because of his accent. The guy basically screams at me and says, Hey you, I need to go back to the hotel, so drive me back there now. Me, noticing that he was a tourist, say, I don't work for any of the hotels, and I'm not a taxi driver. And sir, it's quite dangerous to ask strangers of the streets of a foreign country to take you anywhere. There is an information counter in this building where they may help you. At that, the guy says, no, I know you work for that hotel, and you'd better take me there this instant. I just tell him, I'm sorry, but I said I don't work for any hotels or for you, so excuse me. I then make my way to the metro station, only to find out that the guy follows me there, and he was mad. I sprinted to the turnstile and used my pass to get through it, and stopped to watch what happened to the tourist from the other side. The guy stopped chasing me right after I got through, and he was gesturing obscenities at me. And while he was doing so, the guy left his backpack on the floor. And then, in a godly act of instant karma, someone stole his backpack, which is very common here, especially with tourists. I just burst out laughing and get on the train and make my way home without any other incidents. Oh my gosh, guys, reading this, I'm shaking my head so hard. Like, how dumb could that man possibly be, right? Like, being a tourist in Brazil, drawing that much attention to himself, demanding random local strangers drive in places. Oh my goodness, I can't even begin to imagine all the things that could have happened to that guy. And this person comments, what kind of idiot does something like that in Brazil. He'll be lucky if all he gets is his backpack stolen. And this person comments, Laugh out loud, I live in Sao Paulo and I would never leave my backpack just there on the floor. One more comment, this person says, and you know what, this a-hole is probably still telling stories about the time he went to Brazil and some jerk pretended to be a hotel employee to distract him while his accomplice stole his backpack. Yeah, that is definitely something a Karen would do because it's never their fault and they're never in the wrong for what happens to them. Okay, so I'm posting this now as it's fresh and I'm still in shock that it happened. I've been mistaken for an employee at many various times in my life, and a few of those times have been worse than this, but this one ranks pretty high on my what the F list. So about an hour ago, I snagged a ride to the gas station near my house because I was hit with a pregnancy craving for chips. It was an uneventful 5-ish minute ride, and I got a particularly nice Uber driver who said to take my time. She was marking me dropped off, so I would only be charged for part of the ride, and she would take me home free of charge. So the adventure starts off nice. So I go inside the gas station, and I'm standing in front of the chips, trying to decide how many bags I can buy without my husband getting miffed at me for spending too much money. And don't worry, he doesn't actually get mad. I probably look like I'm carrying twins because this child is already well above average size, so I know I take up a good chunk of real estate wherever I'm standing. After a minute or two, I hear someone clearing their throat. I automatically figure that I'm in the way, so I say excuse me, and then step back to let what I now see to be a 40-ish year old woman, our Karen. And again, let me remind y'all that we're in a gas station not a supermarket or any sort of store where you think to see employees in the aisles. Heck, there aren't really many aisles in this store. Anyways, she doesn't walk by, so I start to move to the end of the aisle. I figure she didn't have enough room to comfortably get by. But is it ever that easy? The woman just steps forward and she asked where I was going. I replied I was moving out of her way, to which she responds with saying, I can't just walk away. She needs help. And hearing her say that, it stumped me. And I'm thinking, help, as in, 
so I ask just that. And she fires back with, I've seen spicy lime lays here before, so I want to know when you'll get more, or if they're in a different spot. And it's at this point I realize what's going on. I tell her I don't work here, but apparently that wasn't the correct answer. Now, instead of an, oh, I'm sorry, or even just a rude stomping away, the Karen says, I've seen you here before. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you can't help a customer. Now obviously she was gonna stick with that, so I just walked back, grabbed a few bags of chips, and then walked to the next aisle to see if I wanted anything else. I heard a few excuse me's after that, but I just ignored her. I just paid and waddled outside. However, much like the late night TV during the 90s, but wait, there's more. Now, I don't know if this woman wasn't willing to admit she was wrong, or seriously thought she wasn't wrong, but she decides the next appropriate action was to follow me outside. I went to open the car door, and this squawking woman puts her hand on the car door, and she shuts it hard. She then proceeds to tell me that I can't just walk away from a customer asking a question. And if you're wondering where the actual clerk is, well, so was I at that point. I honestly couldn't believe this was happening. Hell, I still can't believe it happened. Thankfully, like I'd mentioned, I had gotten a pretty awesome Uber driver. My driver just pops out and she asked if I was okay. Karen shoots off that she wasn't talking to her, but before I could say anything, the driver says, Well, now you're talking to me, lady, so get the hell away from her and my car. Before I come over there and slap you so hard, you won't remember how to talk. I'm not entirely sure if that made Karen realize I wasn't an employee, or if it just scared her enough to make her find a different employee. But she hustled to a vehicle a few spots over and she gets inside the car. I just got back inside the Uber and we watched her leave. I guess she forgot about her chips. After making sure I'm alright, the Uber driver and I had a pretty good laugh on the way back to my house. She wouldn't even accept a tip from me, but I sneakily tipped her in the app after she drove off, so she couldn't argue. Honestly, I'm waiting for people to show up so everyone claps, because I still can't fully believe this event happened, especially at a gas station convenience store, and not even a big one. Like, it wasn't even the size of a 7-Eleven. So what in the world made her assume that a woman in a sundress, who just so happened to be standing in front of the chips, was an employee, is beyond me. Times like this, I'm truly stumped as to these people's thought process. A part of me really wants to know what they're thinking that leads them to this insane behavior. But the other part of me knows that I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. At least I got my chips. Yeah, that is definitely a what the F moment. And like Obi said, there's a good chance that Karen probably doesn't want to admit she made a mistake and she chose to die on that hill. And serious props to that awesome Uber driver who shut Karen down right away before she could take the harassment to the next level. Like seriously, this is just what some people need is a really, really good telling off. And guys, if you think that encounter was a bit wild, listen to this next post. So, a little preface to my story. I'm a female security agent working in a small airport in Germany. My tasks entail checking visas and doing security searches in airplanes. I am not a security officer. I don't physically fight people. I just deny them boarding or deem the plane unfit to fly. But as you might guess, people are always asking me for the other thing. Like, where's the toilet? Do you guys have outlets? Etc. Etc. I know it's not my job to help these passengers, but since I'm only needed on flights and for security issues, I usually do. I've adapted this awful retail smile that I can't hide whenever a passenger asks me something or needs my help. So whenever I go do groceries, I wear headphones so people would leave me alone. So with that said, on to the story. After work one day, I just went to do groceries at a very popular supermarket in Germany. It was really crowded. I was still in uniform, but I was wearing a long coat. You could only see my slacks, really. I put my headphones on and tried to finish my shopping as fast as possible. As I was deciding what kind of tomatoes I was going to choose, some dude taps me on the shoulder. The guy looked Russian, but he didn't speak in an accent. I turned around, took my headphones off, and asked, Yes? In a slightly annoyed tone. The guy just looks at me, apparently very pissed off, and he asked, Are all the lamps gone already? 
I said to him, I don't know, that I'm sorry, but he should ask someone who works here because I don't. He then asked why I'm wearing slacks. I told him I just came from work, but I still don't work here. And the people working here wear long black striped aprons with their names on it. The dude didn't say anything else anymore, and I thought that was the end of it. So I put my headphones back on and turned back to my business. As I was picking up the little cherry tomatoes, I suddenly feel two hairy arms around my waist. I screamed and turned my head. My headphones fell off and the dude just picks me up, not even caring that I demanded very loudly to let me back down again. And the guy starts walking away with me. People of course came running over and an employee tried to reason with this dude, but the guy wouldn't listen. I, at this point, was screaming at him to again let me down. And when the guy wouldn't do that, I elbowed him in the face. I don't think I hurt him, but he let me down after that. The manager brought me a glass of water and asked me if he should call the police. I didn't want any trouble, so I told him, it's okay, I don't need police interference. The dude was escorted out by the store security, and I don't know if he was banned from the store or not. And I'm not gonna lie, that dude scared the crap out of me, the way he just picked me up and started walking with me. I didn't think somebody would actually lift me up like that. In my opinion, the guy deserved more than one elbow in the face for doing that, like Opie should have let loose on him, especially after he ignored everyone's cries to let her down, like what a freaking wild encounter. And what possessed him to do something like that, I don't know, like maybe the guy was sick and tired of useless employees, and he wanted to carry Opie to the back to make her look for the lamps or something. With that said though, what a horrible decision the store manager made, not involving police after that, like way to take care of your customers, sir. Like a person was physically manhandled in your store, and the guy had to ask if police needed to be involved. And this person comments, I'm an average girl, about 5 foot 1, 120 pounds. If some random person picked me up and refused to put me down when I asked and demanded, I sure as heck would call the cops afterwards. I don't understand why people don't call the cops. They are there to help. You are not inconveniencing them. Their job is to help ensure safety, not for you, but for everyone. Sure, OP's situation was diffused before they got seriously hurt, but not calling law enforcement just makes that a-hole think it's okay to behave like that. People say they don't want to wait or cause an inconvenience or be around the person any longer. Wasn't it inconvenience for OP to be interrupted by someone who could have easily hurt them? What if the next person they do that to isn't as lucky because OP and everyone else in a similar situation didn't take the half hour or maybe even several hours out of their life to make a report or have the person arrested? You're not only helping yourself feel safer by calling the police, you're helping others from being in that situation. So yeah, definitely get the police involved, and hopefully the guy took that elbow to the face as a wake-up call. And he's not still out there just manhandling store employees when he doesn't get what he wants. So this just happened yesterday at the college where I teach. During this week, all classes are suspended, and the students prepare their projects for the weekend. At the same time they get prepared, all teachers have to make some kind of presentation. During the presentation, I only had one problem. A girl came into the room, talking on her phone loud enough to bother everyone else. I had to ask her to leave, and she just looked at me and left. No apologies. After the presentation, I decide to help my students, so we went to the lab with all the equipment. I'm in the middle of helping the first group when the girl from the presentation enters the lab. I noticed her entering, but I really didn't care, as all students were free to come into work. After finishing with the first group of students, I noticed she was still standing close to us, just watching me. I just ignored her, and I start working with the second group. Now, this did seem to bother her because she starts sighing and scolding me. I just finished helping my students and decide to leave, as I needed to be somewhere else for a meeting with the other teachers, and that's when she finally talks to me. We'll call her Entitled Brat. She says to me, are you finally done? I respond, if you need consulting, please request it at the front desk. She says, no, I need you to check my phone. Now, this was not a first time for me as many other teachers and workers have come to ask for free tech support. I just grab my things and start leaving the lab saying, I'm sorry, but I don't handle personal devices. She then screams at me and says, don't you walk away from me. Are you listening to me? I'm Daniel's daughter, which is a completely unknown name for me. I just say to her, I don't know him, I can't help you. Go to a repair shop, I'm not IT, they're next door. She just argues with me and says, yes you are, your sign says you fix stuff for free. 
Now here's an important detail. In this college, there's mechanical engineering students that fix minor issues with any car you bring to their garage, and they put a big sign outside. It basically says, come for a free checking for your car. I suppose that's what she was referring to. I tell her, I don't fix anything for free. If you have complaints, please go to the front desk. She continues yelling at me and says, but I saw you help everyone on the workshop and you didn't charge them. I'm going to report you. I tell her, those are my students. She then argues and says, no they're not. I say, yes they are, I'm a teacher, here's my ID. She then takes it and looks at it for a while and she says, well I'm still going to report you. At this point, I decide not to deal with this anymore, so I start to walk away. And she did not like that. She starts following me while trying to grab me. I then reach a part of the building where you can't get past unless you have an employee ID. So that's where I lost her. I thought that was the end of it, but today, HR calls me saying someone had reported me, and they asked me to go to their office. Apparently, the girl was the daughter of some guy working in accounting, and she was not a student. She often went to visit her father, and when she had an issue with her phone, her father told her to go to IT, as they're supposed to fix everything they need. After I refuse to help her, her father decides I should be fired. And here's the reason. He says, as I'm a teacher for IT-related classes, I should also do tech support. So by not helping her, I'm not fulfilling my duty as a teacher. HR just told him to F off. Apparently, that's not the first time he's done something stupid. I didn't get an apology from him, but at least I got a free soda from HR. I'm glad HR had OP's back, and again, I'm not surprised that OP didn't get an apology because people like that never take personal responsibility for their mistakes. I also have no doubt that the accounting guy and his kid still believe OP did something wrong and they're blaming HR for not siding with them. But how entitled is that, right? Like, you're an accountant, dude. Like, how he thinks he can control what teachers do for him is absolutely absurd. So this just happened to me yesterday, and it stands as the biggest what-the-f moment in my job. For a little bit of background, I work as a contracted cell phone technician for a large superstore chain in my country. My job duties entail selling and activating phones and assisting guests with technical issues with their phones. Due to me being a private contractor, I don't answer to any management staff or employee for the superstore, and I'm essentially my own boss. So technically, I don't work there as their employee. On top of this, I do have a right to decline service to anyone. However, I never do because I don't want to turn people away just because they're having a bad day. But after what happened today, I'm going to enact my right to do so for any future encounters. So today, I was minding my own business when I was approached by the Karen, a 65-year-old woman who had like four layers of makeup on her face and a beehive haircut so big, she looked like she had a basketball underneath. The woman explained to me that her phone wasn't working, and being the ever so helpful person I am, I got to work in diagnosing the problem. After doing a quick inspection and tinkering around with the phone, I came to the conclusion that the phone was bricked. I informed Karen of this revelation, and the exchange went a little bit like this. Karen says, so what do we do now? I say to her, well ma'am, unfortunately, the best course of action would be to replace the phone. Luckily, I have the same phone on sale for $49.99. At that, Karen says, well, I'm not buying a phone. I bought the phone from here, so I want it exchanged. I reply, okay, ma'am, do you have the receipt for the old phone? And that's when she went from a nice old lady to an omega-level Karen. She says to me, listen here, I bought this phone almost a year ago, and I don't have the receipt. I bought it here, and now it's defective. Your company has to honor the guest and replace this broken piece of crap. And you're going to do it free of charge. I soon realized that this was going to be a crap show. So I decided to try to Tai Chi the situation to mitigate damage. I say, okay ma'am, I understand you're frustrated. But unfortunately, due to the store's policy, we can't do exchanges after 30 days of purchase. After those words left my mouth, I realized that I messed up and she was ready to retaliate. The woman screams at me and says, BS. You are trying to scam me out of $50, and I'm not having that. It's not my fault that it's a cheap piece of plastic. If anything, it's your fault it's broken. Now, all my watts were expended after hearing this. The woman was actually blaming me, a guy who she's never seen before of breaking her phone. 
I just say to her, ma'am, I'm sorry, but honestly, there's nothing the store can do for you. However, because you bought the phone less than a year ago, the warranty should still be replaceable through the carrier warranty. I would be more than happy to call. She then interrupts me by picking up my stapler. The woman raises it, and then she threatens me with it. She says, you will get me an effing phone right now, or I swear to God, I will throw this stapler at your effing head. I just tell her, ma'am, threatening me is not going to solve your problem. Now, as I was saying, I can call up the carrier and see if they can replace it under their warranty. Karen just throws the stapler to the ground, breaking it. She angrily grabs her broken phone, told me to go F myself, and then storms off. After she left, I picked up the stapler and threw it out, and then I continued with the next guest. Now, I wish it all ended here, but unfortunately, about 5 minutes after she stormed off, the woman returns, but she wasn't alone. Karen did what every Karen dreams of doing. She got the store manager, and it wasn't just him, but she got the security guy as well. The store manager comes up to me and says, So this guest has informed me that you won't assist her with her phone? Would you mind telling me why? I just explained the situation to the store manager, who is looking like he was about to hit me. And then he interrupts me by saying, Okay, so at what point did you throw the stapler at her head? Now I was still confused until it finally dawns on me. The person who threatened me was trying to frame me of assault over a $50 flip phone. I say to him, I never, never did that. In fact, she was the one who threatened me with the stapler. That's when Karen interrupts and says, Oh BS, you threw a stapler at me and you said you were going to choke the life out of me. He wants to kill me. I want this man arrested. The security guy approaches me and he says, is there any way you can corroborate your story? I tell him, check the cameras, they most likely caught the whole interaction. As soon as I said the word camera, Karen goes ballistic. She says, how dare you believe this stupid punk over me? You should feel ashamed of yourself. The security guard tells her, ma'am, we need to make sure to get the full details of the event, so we can better explain it to the authorities. Karen just says, I don't want to wait for police. I said he wanted to choke me, he threw a stapler at me, so just fire him and get someone who can help me. The security guy says to her, uh, ma'am, you just said you wanted him arrested. She says, stop putting words in my mouth, young man, just fire him. And this is when the store manager finally pipes up and he tells her the bad news. He says to her, unfortunately ma'am, he's a private contractor that handles our phones, and we can't fire him because he doesn't work for our company. Now, if he did what you said he did, it would be best to get video proof. That way, we can escort him off the property. As soon as the manager mentions going to take a look at the cameras, the woman switches it up, and she screams, Oh, this is bull crap. All you effers are in on this, and I'm gonna sue you all. I will see you all in court. The woman began to walk away to the door, and she noticed me smiling. I soon regret doing this. Karen just smacks me across the face, and she spits at me. Luckily, the security guy heard the slap, and he quickly subdued her. After a quick call to the cops, she was handcuffed, and she was put in the back of a squad car. The police asked if I wanted to press charges, and all it took was one good look at her for me to say yes. Once I got done with the paperwork, the store manager apologized to me for what happened. He informed me that Karen was blacklisted, and she's to be arrested on site if she's to ever come back to the store. I'm currently writing this laughing at the whole situation, effing Karens. Oh boy, it never ceases to amaze me how far some people will go when they don't get what they want. Like Karen's making up lies to get people fired and arrested, not uncommon. But Karen's all seem to forget one thing, cameras. Like if you're in a big box store nowadays, there's a good chance cameras are watching. I only wish they did call the cops and had them look at the footage. She would be in pretty big trouble. Oh ma'am, you said he threw a stapler at your head and then tried to choke you. Like, where was that in the footage? Oh man, and that my friends brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's in our slash malicious compliance episode. Where a smug Karen owner makes OP obey her stupid orders and it shuts her company down. It's such a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.